Good morning. I'm from the One Way Farm Children's Home, and I just want to thank Lisa Spear and her office for bringing us out today and giving us a nomination. Um, I want to talk really quickly about some of our interesting facts. We were started 40 years ago, and we were founded by Miss Condo. Our location is in Fairfield, but we serve all counties in Ohio, and I'll get a little bit into that a little bit later. Um, we have 14 acres that consists of two houses for staff that actually staff live on site because as you know, when you run a children's home and you're 24 hours a day, you need that backup staff. So our executive director, our HR director, and our child care and placement director all live on site. We have a boy's house, a girl's house. We have an administrative office, a thrift store, an animal barn, daylily fields, walking path, and more space. So we're also looking to expand. It costs $190 per day per child to live at One Way Farm. Now, we get all our referrals from children's services agencies, but we get calls for other people who are not in the system. So we do help with them as well. So children's services works at the county level and they reimburse about $90 a day. So when you think of that, that's $100 per day per child you have to make up. And this is anything from therapies, transportation, food, grants, um, private donations, anything else that can help alleviate that extra $100. So if we're at full capacity, that's just shy of $1.4 million a year that we need to run our programs at the One Way Farm. So we get pretty um, kind of creative with our different fundraising efforts to help provide that, and especially with purposeful giving. So when we look to the future, uh, we have about $125,000 left on our mortgage, which, you know, I'm sitting in the presence of people that work in that every day, so you definitely understand. When you work on a 14-acre farm, those stats are pretty good. We've done really well at financial planning and budgeting, so that way in the future we can maybe build, build more houses. As you heard today, a lot of us work with children you know, or adults, and that need is always there. And I would say with the current times, I could probably build five more houses for each boys' and girls' houses or combined houses and still have a waiting list. Um, getting dinners provided for both houses is, each night is something that we're trying to do to start because it's purposeful giving. Sometimes people write a check and that's great. Some people wanna know where their money goes to and some people wanna be active with the population you serve. So the USDA does a good job of help providing breakfast and lunch and a snack for our kids, but they don't help alleviate the cost for food for dinner. So we have different groups that come in and some people might even just cater a meal for us. Some people do a home cooked meal for us as well. So that's my goal in the future is to get all those meals for 365 days provided for each of our houses because then that can allow staff to take more time with things that are needed. You know, living space, we have, like using the space that we have and the living space that we have to generate revenue. You know, we're starting, we have a rec center that we can provide bridal showers, baby showers. I had a call about a wedding. We have a great farm property, craft shows, concerts, food trucks, rummage sales, etc. So when Miss Condo started 40 years ago, these were not always, you know, an option to have. Now you have social media. Now you have events that are big and pop-up events that happen. So we've been contacted because of our space to help run those. And we definitely take volunteers for these events. And then looking to the future, also animal therapy. A lot of our children are victims of crime. So we have animal therapy programs. We decided that one of the biggest things we know that helps is that sometimes these kids have been victimized, of course, by humans or their parents or their family members, but they'll talk to animals and they'll kind of, you know, hold on to that animal and become a parent of their own to that animal. So we have cats, we have ferrets, we have guinea pigs, dogs, and we've had a lot of different other fish, um, turtles throughout the years. And then I would say seven or eight times, so about 80% of the kids get to take the animal with them when they're fostered or adopted because that is the ultimate goal. And building awareness, just like you guys are here today, I think that's something that everybody said throughout the other charities, building awareness for our group. And the biggest thing that's in the news right now is the heroin epidemic. So we have a different type of kid. These kids have been victimized. They've been trafficked. In the USA, they've been trafficked to get the fix for their parent or their adult you know, that was in their care. So it's definitely interesting to see the different kind of therapies that are available as well as the animal therapy program take off and do so well because of this. And as you know, at the state and federal level, 
there's all this extra money for addiction services, which is great because, you know, their family members or parents or caregivers need the help that they need as well. But there's no extra money given to children. The children's services budget still stays the same. So that's also why our like cost report, you know, exceeds the $90 that children's services provide you with. And I just want to thank you for your support and the community involvement is amazing. I know word of mouth is one of the greatest things. I get calls every week about someone who mentioned our agency to somebody else or someone who needed help, you know, contacted our agency. And as you know, all our charities are really good with connecting people with the services that they need. So, and I'd like to welcome you all to schedule a tour when you can. So we have 14 acres. It's great to see. And then it's also great to see how you can get involved. Thank you.